And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the beer flows steady, it's Paul's Security Weekly. This show is sponsored by Palo Alto Networks, creators of the next generation firewalls, helping you enforce network security policies based on applications, users, and content. Visit them on the web at paloaltonetworks.com and by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit www.sans.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Check out the new Nessus Enterprise and Nessus Enterprise Cloud. Engage your IT department in the vulnerability management process today. And finally, by Black Squirrel. Pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit? Great. But for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. Now it's time to fire up a packet capture, pour yourself a soda, and give your intern control of the botnet, because here's your host. He is a man who can count to potato, but only on his good flipper on Tuesdays, Paul Asadorian. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Paul Security Weekly. This is episode 401 for Thursday, January 8th, 2015. For Allen's area code. That's right. We it only is. Have it's one. the 401 <laughs> episode. And we yeah. only have one area code for the whole state. We do. We do. And plenty of room left. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> only two of us from who live in Rhode Island are here in the studio. Everyone else does not live in Rhode Island. But they have to import so many people. That's right. Because there's, there's, yeah, there's not enough people. So, Welcome, everyone. Happy New Year. I am very excited to kick off this new year with Security Weekly. What better yeah. way to kick off the new year? Absolutely. I'm here with Mr. Larry Pesce here in studio to my right. Welcome, Larry. Yay. With my ever-present RZ USB stick. Nice. Not RZ USB stick. Yeah. RTL dongle. Yes. Double. And Mr. Jack Daniel is here as well. Where? Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Are you hey. old and confused again? <laughs> or have you been drinking? Who, who or both? I, and why am I here? What yeah. is and where are my pants? <laughs> what is the liquid? What is in the cup? Do I want to know? Straight absinthe. Straight. I mean, <laughs> it's absinthe on the rocks. So absinthe it's on the rocks. Well, I was I was going to go light tonight because I get to get nagged at by medical professionals in the next week or so. And then we started the show the way we did. And <laughs> I just poured absinthe in a glass and started drinking. That, that you know, made me want to drink the way we started the show as well. On the lines via Skype, we have Mr. Joff Thayer. Joff, welcome to the gentlemen. Show. Happy New Year. It's good to be here. By the way, Jack, I tell medical professionals largely to piss off whenever they nag me. Um, I'm, I'm at a point where I have to be nice to them because they, like, have to do tests with probe. fingers. <laughs> probe. I hate Lots it when they probing. probe. <laughs> Is Carl, I'm, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to paint too too uh, precise a picture, but let me just say, hey, wait, that's supposed to be an exit. <laughs> right. And wow, I'm glad you have small hands. Wow, <laughs> way to start off the show. <laughs> Welcome to 2015. <laughs> Carlos has not joined us yet, has he? No, Carlos will be along eventually. You should check out our SANS training because Larry's teaching SANS training. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You got uh, – you're teaching uh, – well, yeah. Uh, so, f- well, first, uh, you're not at the ICS. No. Not so yet. Not yet. <laughs> ICS Summit, Summit. SANS ICS Summit. There will be – my class will be there. Um, Which one is that? Uh, embedded Device Hacking for the Rest of Us? Yes, Embedded okay. Device Hacking for the Rest of Us. Thank you. I actually blanked on the title of my own class. This wow. Is, this is how we're starting off 2015. <laughs> yep. Yes. Embedded Device Hacking for the Security Assessments for the Rest of Us will be at the SANS ICS Summit. Then That's February, yes? That's February. Okay. And then Larry and I will both be in Orlando in April Yep. for the SANS Orlando yep. event at the Swan and Dolphin. Yep, I will be teaching uh, SANS SEC 617. And I'll be teaching embedded device security assessments for the rest of us. Yep. Also, uh, both of those are in Orlando. Yep. One is at the Contemporary, one is at uh, Swan and Dolphin. Yep. So, I'm going to Disney twice. Yay! Yes. 
Yes. Uh, and, and then uh, I'll be speaking at another conference in March in Orlando, coincidentally enough. And then next week or the week after? The week after, I travel for Tenable to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Wow. You're just gonna Let have to the hate mail flow. You're okay? just going to have to retire down there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, so I'm doing Orlando in April, all for SAN 66617. Mm-hmm. Um, Austin, Texas, uh, towards the end of May. Oh, nice. Baltimore, Baltimore Maryland for SANS Fire in June, and then immediately departing uh, SANS wow, Fire to go to close. Berlin, Germany. Nice. Yeah. So I basically have to leave the, the the last day of class on the twentieth there and uh, go to the airport and go to Berlin. That's awesome. To teach Monday. Yeah. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. So do you have a day in the you have, I have the twentieth? I have yeah. to give yourself a day of rest in between. Sort of assuming of course that I make it because I'm crossing the, the time f- change and you, your time change is <laughs> yeah, messed up. Yeah, from oh, excuse the future. Me. Yeah, Bless you. yeah, yeah. Your, Europe's not that bad, except for that first day is a long day. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no international dateline change or any of that stuff, so it should work out. And That's I want to cool. leave on that the day of the twentieth that night and see if I can do a red eye or something, because then um, uh, if oh, there so are any not, travel I delays, I, I, I haven't booked travel for that. It's too far out yet. I got gotcha. you. It's not until June. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm barely booking it for next week. Uh, <laughs> I'm. I'm. Yeah. And I'm. You're all over going to Schmookon. I'm going nowhere. I, I, my, I'm still enjoying about six months of substantially reduced travel, and we'll see. Mm-hmm. Looking, f- looking forward to uh, to uh, a couple of things, but for the most part, I, I kind of it's kind of cool. Nice lady that lives at my house turns up. She's my wife. We've been married like almost thirty five years and stuff. She's wow, it's, it's crazy shit. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Craziness. All right. Yeah. So our interview for this show. Speaking of crazy. Is by far the youngest person we've interviewed on the show. By far. Probably by a landslide. Um, and uh, he's here with his dad. So uh, Ruben Paul is the eight-year-old CEO, cybersecurity ambassador, keynote speaker, hacker, and a kung fu kid. He's the chairperson of uh, InfoSec conferences. Uh, a few titles to describe Ruben Paul, again, he's eight years old and a third grader at Harmony School of Science in Austin, Texas. When asked by his first grade teacher to illustrate his future career, he drew on a sheet that he wanted to become a cyber spy. You know what? That's what I want to be when I grow up, too. Me, too. (laughs) Ruben, (laughs) welcome to the show. Can you hear me okay? Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Yes. Your dad, uh, Mono, is here. Welcome, Mono. Hey, uh, hey, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's good uh, to see you guys. Uh, I've, uh, Mono, I've met you at uh, several conferences in the past, yes. uh, and most recently at DerbyCon in 2014. I, I met both of you uh, right. while, while we were there, so it's great to have you both uh, on the show with us. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, and what's funny is I... Um, I was telling Ruben that uh, I've uh, always wanted to be on Paul.com, and it was Paul.com, but uh, he superseded me. Where I'm <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, my voice. Yeah. Nice. I'm on this show on, because he's on the show. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, yeah. now, uh, Ruben, it's interesting. Um, you're not only the youngest, uh, probably one of the youngest CS, uh, CEOs I've ever met, uh, but you're both involved in martial arts as well. Um, yes. which was on the bio on your, your website. And, and you weren't kidding, Mono. I, I found a video of you on YouTube kicking some guy's butt. <laughs> I, uh, I, get dis- I get disqualified from uh, you know sparring tournaments because they give me the warning of not kicking somebody on their face, but then somehow their face makes contact with my leg. It's <laughs> unbelievable how that happens. <laughs> It's a mystery. <laughs> and now, uh, Ruben, you're a black belt uh, as well, right? Is that true in, in Shaolin Do? Yeah. Very that cool. Is, very cool. Yeah, we. Um, and, I, and what's funny? What is funny is that Ruben actually tested before me by about twenty minutes for his black belt. So technically, he's my senior in in the school, and so I have to bow to him. Nice. Uh, as a senior. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Sometimes the student becomes the master. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's very that's cool. Awesome. That's awesome. So. Uh, Ruben, how uh, now? I I, rem- I was about seven years old 
when I got started computer programming. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything with like security. I was writing programs on Apple IIe. So, Ruben, I'm curious to see like at what age did you get started uh, in computers and, and what kind of led you to uh, do some of the things you're doing now? Well, I got started kind of in 7-2. I was in second grade. And I was actually put in a program in my school, Harmony School of Science Austin. I was put in a program called GTE, which stands for Gifted and Talented. And in the program, uh, our assignment was to make a game. But the trick was it, it was supposed to be educational. So um, most people took the route of making a board game. But when I, I came home and said, hey, Dad, I want to build an app. Mm. So... So my dad taught my dad and me released my first app called Shuriken Math, and then we the school actually liked it so much that they were willing to buy it, and that's how Putting Games got born. That's that's so you basically started your own video game company. Yes. Educational video game company at that. That's Educational right. makes it sound boring though. <laughs> it doesn't it sounds Dude, far from Shuriken Math. How is that boring? Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> so what? So what? Tell me about some of the games that uh, you are creating. So from educational, from like math, we started to expand up to security. So we started to expand to like brute force attacks and password cracking. So the apps I made was one of them was called Cracker Proof, and the other was called Crack Me If You Can. And then I have Shuriken Math, as you know. I gotcha. I gotcha. So what? What? What are the uh, the password apps? They don't help me crack passwords, right? Do they? Or is it well, more? Actually, it <coughs> helps you. Uh, it helps you from people cracking your password. Uh, it also helps like, people how to build strong passwords. Yeah. That's the idea is. Excellent. Do you so, find so um, a lot of your friends at school use like really bad passwords, and you're the one that tells them that they should use a better password? Uh, yeah. I mean, the school itself. I would say right, the so. school itself uses A, B, C, D, 1, 2, hey, 3, 4. Hey, you don't tell that out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have the same password as my daughter's school. <laughs> How about that? Wow. That's awesome. Oh, boy. You know, there's a famous scene in a movie where he's still, you know what, never mind. Pencil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pencil. Pencil. Oh, that's that's great. So, have you found that people have learned from your uh, uh, apps? Like, have they come to you and, and said, "Hey, I learned how to build a, a better password." Like, you know, what's the feedback been like? I haven't gotten much feedback, gotten much feedback yet. Oh but. well, uh, make sure that people go to prudentgames.com and, and give Ruben some feedback on his uh, on his apps that you yeah. have for for iPhone and iPad. Um, that's that's really cool. So uh, when you built the first one, that was the Shuriken Math. Did you get an A on that project, or? Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Nice, nice. So it was not graded. It was uh, it actually was. wasn't graded, but it was about the uh, our program was actually evaluation. So we, I kind of va- evaluated to the next level. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice, nice, nice. Very cool. cool. Very so cool. um, it, you were um. At uh, DerbyCon, Derby what, w- what were you presenting on at, at DerbyCon? Well, I was presenting on information security from the mouth of babes. Yes, uh, I was there. F- I was there for that one actually. Yes. Yeah. So what? I'm asking you the benefit of our listeners because I was there. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Paul. Paul, your his first impression of you was when you had the kilt on and your um, keep calm and hack naked T-shirts. So. Yeah, I was I was wearing a kilt. I do apologize for that. I hope it's not too scarring <laughs> for you. Tell about why should teach kids? Why should kids teach kids? Uh, kids teach you? So that yeah. Talk. So our topics were like, why should you teach kids about information security, and how can you teach kids about information security, and what can kids teach you about information security? Hmm. And then I did a Kali Linux demo to support it and. Got shell on a win- fully patched Windows 8 system. Very nice. I, I remember that. That's really Very um, nice. So, like, your friends jealous, or they're like, "What is what is this hacking thing?" Uh, what is this hacking thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's a, that's okay. 
It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're doing that's awesome. A, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, so uh, so Ruben, um, I, I was the one that said to the guys, we should really have Ruben on the show. And and part of that, you know, Paul and I both have, have children about your age. Uh, you're a little older. And for me, you've been an inspiration you know, the younger generation inspiring one of the older generations to inspire, try to inspire my kids to be more like you, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to and educate their friends about computer security, to become involved in some of the, the projects that they want, to find other ways to sort of learn about all, all this type of stuff. So I want to say, say thank you for inspiring me so that I can help inspire other folks as well. Yeah, thank you very much. So how old were you when you got your first laptop, Ruben? Uh, I was about seven. Seven, so okay, he yeah. Was on, he was working on a Windows, old Windows hand-me-down computer, and uh, Windows XP. It, would, it was Windows XP. And <laughs> it's not gonna let you forget that, Mono. <laughs> Dad, you made me use Windows XP. You're a horrible parent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was one of those bad parenting parenting days, I guess. But that would take forever. Like every time you would like try to build or compile or do anything at all on. The system it'll just take forever. So finally, we we decided we'll get him a MacBook, uh, and he's got a cool MacBook Air. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was his birthday gift last year, actually. So he's got a better nice. computer than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my son started out. He's got a really old MacBook that the battery's dead, so if the power cable comes unplugged, it turns off. So he's pretty frustrated with that, and he's six. So. Um, you know, I, I, that's why I asked because I was kind of like wondering when's the right time to introduce the yeah. a little nicer laptop now uh, yeah. for him. My because my oldest daughter's laptop was m your old PC that's right. Mac. Yep. Um, that she got when she was three because she kept coming into my home office, sitting on my lap, and wanted to watch videos on Nickelodeon, and I found I wasn't getting any work done. So because yeah. we were sitting there watching videos on Nickelodeon all day. And uh, so we set her up with that one, and she did the best hacker move I think I've ever seen her do. Um, was when she had it set up in the living room, she went to sit down and start figuring out how to use Nickelodeon. But she asked, we were at Grandma's house, and she asked Grandma for a bowl of Cheetos. So she sat down at the computer with a bowl of Cheetos, and she had Cheeto fingers nice. <laughs> going at the computer. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Ruben, now, did you have tablets before the laptop? Is that how you were introduced to technology? Uh -huh. I think I had an iPad before it. I mm -hmm. won that at a competition named Disco. It was called. It was for a digital storytelling, uh, storytelling contest. Of course so. you did. Of course you did. Anything <laughs> 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 so less. He actually, he actually won the iPad. It was the iPad Mini that he won for doing a video biography of his, uh, you know, life called the Kung Fu Kid. So. Nice. Uh, it's there on YouTube. So <laughs> that's awesome. I can't wait to. I ha I haven't found that one yet, but I, it's I, in the show I, notes. I, is it? Is yeah. it linked to it in the it's show, in the show notes? notes? Yep. At the bottom. Yep. You, 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 we're gonna have to have Ruben come over and show you how to interact. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Clearly. <sighs> Clearly. Man. If you read the show notes, Paul. Uh, you probably. I, I read the show notes. I, you know what? I bet he knows more about memes than you do. Probably. <laughs> you can, can you do a meme test? No. And see <laughs> no. which ones were. No. no, you don't know any clean memes. Probably that's the problem, Larry. That's right. I also don't know any clean memes either. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy. So what? What are your current projects now, Ruben? Like, what are you? What's the next thing you're you're working on? Memes. Well, uh, I'm actually quitting from. I'm actually moving on to a better iOS developer. Uh, program. program, which is called Swift from Objective C. So I don't yet know what it is. I'm still learning. So. So he's learning Swift now, and then what? One of the things why Shuriken Math is not out in the App Store yet is because uh, right about when he had it ready for release, uh, Apple changed their iOS operating system to Swift, or like the I mean the programming language to Swift. So he's currently actually going through the tutorials and learning Swift. Uh, how to program, and nice. uh, nice. He's, he's picking up pretty well. So we probably will release that uh, most likely by end of February time frame with uh, Swift as opposed to Objective C, which is much more cryptic, and he had challenges learning it himself. So. Yeah. So. And so, so here's my challenge. You know, given that my daughter is a is a little bit younger, she's only in first grade. Um, 
How did screw, you go? Screw you. My kids are like his dad's. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you go about starting to learn programming languages and, and some of that type of stuff? Because quite honestly, my daughter is seven and she's just starting to figure out this reading thing. And you kind of need to be able to read really well to program. Yeah. Yeah. So what I actually get started with was when I was about five or six, I started with a programming language called Scratch. It's mm -hmm. built by MIT. And Scratch actually helps uh, kids learn the reg uh, programming language, logic. not logic. Sure. And you, instead of like typing every line of code in, you actually have to like drag blocks in. So you can basically create your own Flappy Bird game with that if you wanted to, uh, with dragging box like when player clicks, uh, press or uh, flap, flap, Flappy Bird flap or something. Okay. So yeah, it was more of an object drag and drop kind of mm -hmm. thing that he got introduced to. The other thing with Ruben was like uh, I I I realized when he kind of had the acumen to to learn programming was when he came once and he asked me, um, how does the iPhone know where you touch, right? And so uh, I was not an iOS, uh, uh, you know, I had not any, I did not have any background with iOS development or so. So I had to go look it up and when I looked it up, I found out that it was an XY coordinate system. If it's greater than half the screen uh, in terms of the touch location, then it, you've touched on the right side as opposed to the, to the left side. So I was explaining to him the X and Y coordinate system, and this was probably about six years, when he was about six years old or so. And immediately he translated that into uh, what he understood of angry birds. And he said, oh, so that's how angry birds works. And so when Y is equal to zero, the bird is on the ground. So, you know, and I realized that, uh, you know, I realized he had some kind of an acumen to understand programming logic. So I immediately gave him like a linear equation graph, like, uh, you know, the linear uh, equation y equal to mx plus b. And I told him, now fill this this chart out. And after about uh, uh, 20, 30 minutes, he came back and he had for every x what the y value would be by plugging in and doing the math for it. So Jeez, that I, kind of I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, Ruben, are you accepting investors into whatever software company you're going to create <laughs> when you get a little older? <laughs> No, uh, you should say we got turned down by an investor. We company. got turned down by an investor company. Actually, you did really. Was yeah, just thought that he was too young for anything. So. Yeah, yeah. It'd be uh, interesting to go on Shark Tank and ask those, uh, yeah. those people. Uh, yeah, oh, well, we should we should connect you with uh, with the Mach Thirty Seven folks if you don't know them. Okay. No, yeah. we do not know. Them. Jack. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they'd be interested or not, but uh, they do. Uh, they're sort of a, a micro incubator. And okay. they uh, do smaller investments, but they also do training and work with people to uh, get them to where it uh, makes sense to build a company, rather than just uh, okay. rather than sit down in front of Sequoia out of the out of the box uh, or or a cell or somebody like that. Right. right. Okay. All right. I would appreciate that if you if you yeah. can make that connection. Absolutely. Remind me, I'm old. I forget things, but absolutely. I will. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you've already forgotten. <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember my glass is empty. <laughs> you know, Very I nice. don't like kids, but I like this one. I don't know what's wrong with me. But I just, <laughs> Man, this kid's all right, you know. He's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Ruben, you gave a, a, a key, you were a keynote speaker uh, at a conference in Houston. Was that the yeah. same speech that you gave at DerbyCon, or was that a different one? Dude, that was a different one. What that was, was on how kids and hackers can be similar. So why kids make the best hackers? Or like why kids make the best hacker, hackers? Right. I so it's why like three to four. Uh, so our points were on that was that hackers are creative and uh, kids, are. kids are creative and hackers are cool and kids are cool. <laughs> um, See, Jack, you were right. <laughs> 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 And then hack hackers are credible. That means they're trustable. And kids are also like very social. trustable. Mm. And then um, kids are the best social. Kids engineers. are also the best social engineers. They are. My son. Guys. Yeah, my son social engineers me the whole time, like all the time, all the time. Right. 
He's now he's six, Ruben. So just to back up your point on how kids are the best social engineers, he's six, right? And yeah. I was in his room last night, and I don't know if we can maybe zoom in on this this picture I took when I was in his room, and you have to hear how he social engineered me. Now, now remember, he's six, and this is a a picture of his bookshelf in his room. I don't know if you can see that. But that's a, one of the shelves on his bookcase is filled with soda, Dr. Pepper, and Sprite. Like there's like six or seven cans. And I walk in his room and I'm like, I'm like B, <laughs> what, what's, what's the deal with the soda? He's like, that's for my fort. That's for my, my secret hideout. And I need soda in my secret hideout. I'm like, I, I can't really argue <laughs> with that. <laughs> if you have a secret hideout, why wouldn't you want soda <laughs> in your I secret mean, hideout? Right? Daddy might want something other than soda. <laughs> yeah, he said. But, you know, so, yeah, I totally <laughs> agree because he – and that's just an example of what he he pulls with me all the time. So, yep. Now, Ruben, do you spend much time playing video games or do you spend more of your time, like, like using the computer and creating things? Or is it pretty split? I'd probably say that I play more time playing video games. Good, but good. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yes, Have fun while you're young. Yeah. What's your favorite video – What's your favorite he video game right now? Uh, uh, my favorite video game is Call of Duty. <laughs> 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 well, of course. Yes. It is. <laughs> Dude, no, that's not his favorite video game. He doesn't get to play that. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's social engineering me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, my favorite video game is... Actually, I like Halo. My dad lets me play Halo. Nice. Once Don't tell now. mom. Don't tell mom. Actually, mom plays sometimes. <laughs> mom plays sometimes. Oh, nice. All right. That's great. All right. <laughs> so, are there are there any other like projects around the house that you guys are doing, like new computers or like in my house, for example, we've got a new home automation system that we're we're playing around with. Like, is there any any kind of like, newer yeah. technology that you're playing around with? We're thinking we haven't done this yet, but we're thinking we're gonna uh, play with Arduino. Arduino mm -hmm. projects. Cool. So to, to build like an RFID reader. Uh, to, be, uh, to build like an RFID reader and stuff like that. Very nice. nice. Very nice. nice. Dad, you're gonna need an RFID swipe card to get in this room now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be like, no, it's outside yeah. of the approved hours for mom and dad to be in the room. Your RFID cards don't work. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I should send you my jam lock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's right. awesome. Yeah, so in, in all of his, to answer your question earlier, Paul, all of his talks, he's been, he, he, he doesn't repeat any of his talks in any of the conferences. So everyone has been a distinct talk uh, that he's given. And he's been very fortunate. He ended up uh, doing four uh, talks last year and three keynotes in, of those four talks, uh, which is pretty good, I think, for, a, for an eight-year-old to have. Right? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mano, sometimes living vicariously through your children, right? <laughs> I've, I've talked in so many conferences and all, but I really enjoy just sitting and listening to him talk. And uh, he ends up actually, so the way we do it is uh, he'll ask me for help with regard to the idea or the concept. And then I make him actually do the outline and he writes every single uh, bullet point and every single uh, line that is in his presenter notes just so that he can own the material. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then we kind of help flush that out for him as it, uh, as he kind of does stuff, uh, you know, as he kind of before the talk. But he makes us super nervous before every talk because he'll be like busy watching TV, his Cartoon Network or something like that. And he'll be like, <laughs> oh, prepare for your talk. And he'll be like, I got this one. Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then he goes and, you know, he, he knocks he it out of the park. There, so. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So Ruben, I lo I loved your uh, just your 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 write ups from the the various conferences and your uh, your comments with uh, about DerbyCon and uh, Jim Manley okay. having to get you a chair to stand on, uh, <laughs> and, and that we've never had this kind of problem before. I thought that was great. It's awesome. Uh, I'm also going to uh, Hack in the Box Hackspo in May 2015 this year uh, in Amsterdam. So if any of you are there. Uh, see if you can catch me. Awesome. I'm so assuming. Got, uh, yeah, I'm assuming Dad's gonna stay close when he's in Amsterdam. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta give it time. He he has so, to learn sometime, but not at uh, eight. 
<laughs> yeah, we, we actually, uh, we just got word about that from the organizers from Hack in the Box. And uh, Larry, it's unfortunate because I think it's in May when you're going to be here in Austin. And we oh. would have loved, would have loved to host oh, you. And if, if, we are not, if it doesn't clash with the timing, then uh, he's invited to be one of the highlight speakers uh, for the... Um, for the Hackspo Hack in the Box conference in Amsterdam in May. So. That's great. That's great. Yeah, we'll have to sync up about time on that, and we'll, we'll see what right, we get. Right, yeah, surely. Yeah. So, are there any plans to go to DefCon this year, or? Uh, uh, my dad will answer that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So originally we want, so when I've been like with like Paul, you've seen me at DEF CON and in Black yeah. Hat and other circuits. And uh, initially I, inter I wanted to bring him and I thought he'd be ready. Uh, DerbyCon was probably, I mean, when I came and spoke last year in DerbyCon, uh, actually the year before uh, in DerbyCon, I felt it was a much more family centric and a very, yes, I agree. you know, your close knit kind of environment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Ruben is yet ready for DEF CON. Uh, he probably is ready from like the Roots Asylum uh, project kind of thing. But the environment is what uh, uh, I don't know if he's yet ready for. So I don't know. We haven't thought about that. I told him um, maybe a few more times in DerbyCon and kind of help him to learn the the culture, the you know the the hacker and security culture. Well, uh, uh, one of the reasons I mentioned that is that Chris Hadnagy puts on a, a kid yes. style kind of event. Uh, at right. so right, right, and and Chris has been in good contact and close contact with uh, with Ruben. So mm -hmm. you should tell. Oh uh, you uh, know. yeah, uh, you saw me do the poly polygraph, right? Polygraph. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. We did. Uh, right, and and yeah, you with Paul was right there next to you. I think in that. Uh, that was yeah. really funny, man. That's that's dangerous. Like you know, what do you do with, <laughs> your, what do you do with your vegetables? You know, have you ever cheated on a test kind of thing? Did That's tough for an brother? eight year old. Yeah. Tattle on your brother? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think you failed that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Chris has been wanting to also get him on uh, the Social Engineer podcast, I think. But, oh, so uh, wait, is this the first podcast that you've ever done? Yeah. Yes, this is the very wow. first podcast. Ever. You can tell That's Chris up. when you talk to him and you're on his podcast. <laughs> tell him that Paul said neener, neener, neener. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> very nice. Oh, that's great. That's great. So now I assume you're going to be back at DerbyCon this year? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, we've got uh, – hopefully uh, we're just talking about doing some special things at DerbyCon, so – Make sure that uh, we clue you in on that. And uh, yeah. well, you're certainly getting started at a right age, Ruben. And uh, awesome accomplishments so far um, by by a lot. I mean, that's you know, a lot of us worked for many years before we even were invited to speak at a keynote. Uh, <laughs> yep. So yep. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're definitely uh, don't don't let it go to your head either. Be my advice. I'm sure Dad works on that angle a lot, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I, I heard. He, I heard he also got some really great advice from Atlas while he was at uh, DerbyCon. So, yeah, yeah. that's good. good. Yeah, Atlas is a good man. Right. Excellent. Well, anything else that you guys wanted to uh, to share with us for our listeners or or tell our listeners yeah. about? We had, a, we had a couple of questions left if you wanted. So yeah, we had a couple of questions that Chris had sent that uh, were kind of more like. Superpower oh, okay. or something like that. So if you want to go over that room, oh, yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. Oh, I the do have those. five questions. Yes, we got to do the five questions. Okay, so, Ruben, are you ready? Paul, if you yes. read the wiki. We, I, it helps if I read my own notes here. Uh, we tweaked the five questions to be age appropriate. So, uh, <laughs> it, Ruben, if you had superpowers, what would they be? Um, If I had superpowers, they would be... Spidey sense. Yeah, good because word. then I could sense hacks before they actually happen. I like and it. Good reason for it as well. So, Ruben, if and you... Also, um, uh, go ahead. And also, they call me Spider Ben in gymnastics. And if you wanted to see, this is my laptop. Nice. 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 I like that a lot. Nice. Larry, you're going to have to make me one of those it, in your vinyl. Yeah, cutter. you know, I've, I've been thinking about some what I can print on the, the vinyl yeah, there you go. cutter. And my, I was thinking about that. You like, needed I need to, to talk to Ruben. Who else would you talk to? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Ruben, if you were a Star Trek or Star Wars character, which one would it be? Uh, I My dad says I'm too young for Star Trek. 
And yes. actually, Star Trek was created before his time. So no, technically, no, it was around my time. <laughs> <laughs> so, technically, Jack, <laughs> Jack, Jack's kids remember the original Star Trek, so it's fine. <laughs> but uh, I do know Star Wars, and uh, Yoda would probably be a little bit too old for me. But <laughs> I would consider my dad as like Obi Wan. And me as the pod one, Anakin, before he went to the dark side. Yeah, let's make let's make sure Ruben doesn't go to the dark side, please, because there's <laughs> enough of that out there. Yeah. That's an excellent right. answer. Right. <laughs> Ruben, uh, three words to describe yourself. Uh, most people call me the CEO or the Kung Fu Kid, but my mom calls me compassionate. My dad calls me creative. And I thank God for the gifts and talents that he's given me. Excellent. Excellent. I was figuring the third one was going to be your, what your brother calls you, but that's probably, yeah, that's probably <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ruben, I know you have uh, two great uh, outstanding parents, but if you had to pick two celebrities that would be your fictitious parents, who would they be? Alive, dead, cartoon, or otherwise? Uh. <laughs> I would pick, actually, I, I would stay with my parents as a celebrity, but if you really want me to answer that question, I would pick uh, Mother Teresa, even though she, you know, she was, she, she should be my grandmother. It's true, it's true. It's very perceptive. And that also she was a nun. This is true. But, this is also very true. I expect nothing less from... But also, she was very compassionate, and she had a heart for people, and she would serve without... Uh, expecting anything else back and I would pick a Martin Luther King Jr. as my dad because I am because like I'm a dreamer and he's a dreamer and we both uh, sorry we just to, we're, you, we're all you, in awe Ruben you answered that question better than any adult so that's <laughs> just we're all just kind of in <laughs> shock right better now than, better than any adult in the last year at least at least been on the show at least wow <laughs> I have a dream that one day the world will be a safe and secure place. Wait. But it won't be safe and secure. Oh, wait. That's fabulous. Okay. And not only that, now we have a sound clip of Ruben that we can play on future shows, yes. and you'll forever live the dream for me on Security <laughs> Weekly, Ruben. We're, Thank you for that. We're, we're done. I mean, <laughs> we can't just, we're just. I think we're done. Wait, he's, got, well, he's got one more question. One, one more, more question, question, Ruben. What, so, what song best describes your life? Paul, Paul, before you answer that question, oh, sorry. he had something else that he was thinking when he wrote that thing, I have a dream. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You should tell them about but, that. But, but let me think. If the Good. world was a safe and secure place, there wouldn't be really any need for Security Weekly, right? That's right. This is true. <laughs> Good Maybe the, point. Where the world is perfect right where it is. It's either that, that, that or we'll have to go well, to the dark side. got a lot of things planned for we, this show. We'll just, so. we'll just turn it into a cocktail podcast to compliment this, the cigar podcast. There you go. <laughs> or we'll have to go to the dark side. <laughs> what, become vendors? <laughs> oh, wow. 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 No. So, uh, Ruben, what song best describes your life? Well, actually, I have two songs. The first one would be, and they both have different variations to it, but the first one would be, uh... Hack all the things, but don't drink all the booze. Gotcha. Hack, Go, hack all the things. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> wow. I almost got that in my laptop. Yeah. <laughs> Joff, got any advice? Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Wow. And the second song is Everything is Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Expect nothing Everything less. Everything is cool when you're on Security Weekly. Uh, nice. <laughs> Just even more sound clips now. That's just, just <laughs> like at least two or three in there that, with your dad's permission and your permission, we're going to use okay. on previous on, on, su on subsequent shows. So, uh, well, Ruben, you're certainly awesome, and everything's awesome now because I don't know how we top that. We might as well just. Just, you know what? Screw this. We're going to need a whole year. week to come up no, with a show no, that tops that. No, no, interview. no. We just, heck with this whole 10 year thing. We're done. It's, it's, it's it. it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we should have. We, we just, just don't we've, met, we've hit the pinnacle. <laughs> don't tell our wives so we can still come here and drink every Thursday night. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> we've hit the pinnacle. Uh, well, Mono and Ruben, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. Ruben, you're, you're an amazing kid. I was so glad uh, that we we're able to share uh, what you've been up to and your stories uh, here on Security Weekly. 
Um, and I know you've inspired me, so I'm sure you've inspired many of our listeners um, to uh, – got to up my game now. <laughs> 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 yes. So, Ruben, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity too. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we're very, very you know, honored with this uh, – with this, uh, with this opportunity. So thank you very much. Uh, Jack didn't speak much, but uh, you know, Jack, I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, know, I got I nothing think. to say. You know that. <laughs> uh, I know, uh, Ruben, it's getting pretty close to your bedtime, so I don't want to get pretty close to my bedtime. Infringe, infringe on that either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, thank you very much. Tell your dad. You Thanks, can, I said you can stay up late tonight. Because you did such a great <laughs> job. <laughs> uh, uh, He's like, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. Okay, fine. <laughs> nice <laughs> try, kid. <laughs> uh, try to help you out. If Ruben. not up late, <laughs> extra dessert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. If he stays up late, he's going to have to do his homework. So he probably won't want to stay up late. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, well, you got to do right. your homework anyways. So, I mean. Right. <laughs> extra dessert and homework. Excellent. Well, guys, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about the stories for this week. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 